Let's head back to the voicemail of Truth and Reason. Uh, this one, a frequent caller and a very ardent supporter of Baker Mayfield. Yeah, this is Mr. Senator Mayfield, babe. I got a little uh, tidbit for you. Today in Norman, Oklahoma, Baker Mayfield had his youth pro football camp, and uh, he was interviewed. Uh, I put this on to the Seahawks website in case the Seahawks fans uh, get to have Baker come to them, but if it stays even with uh, Browns, I'd say it's pretty important. Now, this was a man, not an emotional brat, who openly said he loved the town of Cleveland and did not regret his four years playing there. Now, I've listened to almost five years of your Brown interviews, and what I've seen is an ultimate leader who always ended his talks with, we need to get better, and I need to play better. So does that sound like a distraction in the locker room? Mm, I don't really think so. Does it sound like a man that has confidence, but yet he's smart enough to know that it's not just him? But I'll tell you a little secret. Here in Sooterland, it's we go where Baker goes. And there's no way in heck you're going to tell me that Jacoby Brissett or Josh Dobbs or even if you bring in somebody like Teddy Bridgewater is going to give the Browns a better chance of going where they need to go than Baker Mayfield. And, yep, I am a ardent supporter, and I always will be because of what that man shows. And I love the underdog, and he's been the underdog, and he's been the champion so many times, and he'll do it again. Thank you. Goodbye. All right, as always, appreciate all of the voicemails. Uh, again, the problem now with Baker Mayfield and the Browns, and I said it before, he doesn't want to be here. And if a quarterback doesn't want to be in a situation, he can't be the quarterback. I mean, we saw that with a wide receiver, Odell Beckham Jr. Can you imagine, Spencer, what that would look like if a, with a quarterback who really doesn't want to be with a franchise? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that, that would not go over well. I, I think – when this when this narrative first came out, I thought you know it was entertaining, it was fun, it was cute. We we enjoyed talking about it, um, and I it, it's funny because I think it started kind of on a local level, like where people like myself or others here locally who have a platform, like we kind of said like, hey, what if they talk about Baker Mayfield coming back in if, if Deshaun Watson can't play? But then it kind of went away, and now I feel like this week it's just been rehashed by a lot of the national media, and I just I, I've been saying from the start that would be the most far-fetched idea. I mean, th this bridge just feels burnt to the ground, no chance of, of reconciling things. Um, I, I put that to bed a long time ago. I know people are maybe holding out hope that maybe they they fix things and he's able to come back. But from what he said this week, like you said in your comments, it doesn't sound like he really wants to be here at this point. He made it pretty clear. Both sides seem ready to move on. I guess he kind of left the door open by saying it would take the Browns maybe reaching out and, and talking things through. But – I don't even think that was enough to make it sound like there's any possibility this guy's under center next year. You're, you're right. He doesn't want to be here. Uh, I think both sides are kind of at a point where they're saying we're moving on. You know, this thing's over. I think it's best to rip off that Band-Aid and, and look elsewhere and, uh, you know, put that in the past. Yeah, and again, I think he can play in the league, um, and I'm sure, sure. He'll, he'll get another shot without question.